This is No Shots Fired episode 61. We are celebrating two weeks in a row of doing the podcast. We did it. Um pop your champagne. Break out your bubbles. We are officially starting 21, 2021 off right. Today we're going to be talking about Code Vein, um, specifically Junk Blades. We're going to be talking about that. I will be talking about Desperados 3. Um, we're also going to be discussing Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is another Junk Blade game. Uh, then we're going to talk about the one of the greatest years in gaming that have ever, I mean, scholars, I think, with all just agreed 1993 we're going to talk we're talking about our top comes up all the time year. yeah comes up a lot then as always we'll be filling out the uh round the show with uh your questions when's the last time we actually had a question let's not uh, delve into that too deeply yeah. um we have had yeah. questions before and that's all that matters really <laughs> and we're going to be able to say uh, in an hour and 15 minutes when's the last time we answered a question we're going to be able to say it, it was 15 minutes ago <laughs> so Without further ado, let's jump right in. Junk Blade's been playing some uh, relatively new games. Code Vein, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, well, Code Vein is first on the list, so may as well go with that first. Uh, so I actually finished the game for the first time recently. Mm. Uh, so, as I... Now, I've... before... Yes? just described i do not know what code vein is uh, i was just about to get into that so it is very much a dark souls-esque game where uh you accumulate experience but if you die it's all in one little spot you have to get back to before you die again or you lose it permanently if you have not spent it yet uh, and it shares a few other things with Dark Souls, like the general feel of if you're surrounded by multiple enemies, you're just screwed no matter how high of a level you are. But then it also does its own thing in many respects. Uh, it has a much more in-depth story. Uh, there's cutscenes with character and voice acting. Uh, Whereas Dark Souls, you pretty much get the story from the description of items you find and very, very minimal cutscenes in comparison. Uh, whereas with this game, you can delve into the backstories of every single one of your companions if you would like. Uh, when you say if you would like... Is the are these backstories delivered in game or through items or what? They are delivered in game through your acquisition of the character class abilities. Uh, you play back through a character's memories. Okay. Uh, however, uh, you can skip every single cutscene in the game if you would like. So even if you want all of the abilities and don't care about any of the story, you can just repeatedly hit the start button and not have a single clue what the heck's going on. <laughs> sure. Uh, as for what the heck is going on, um, all of, pretty much all of the characters in this game are this game's version of vampires. And Vampires, regardless of how strong or weak they are, have a tendency to eventually go into what is called frenzy, where they just go insane and become basically a wild animal until they get killed. Fun. Okay. Fun for them. This happened to the vampire queen, who uh, unfortunately is strong enough she can't be permanently killed like other vampires. She had to be dismembered and sealed away so that because she caused the apocalypse event in the game and killed half the planet, something like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so those 
pieces were sealed away in what are called successors, which are special bosses in the game and directly related to which of the three endings you get. Uh, if you, so, if you, and the way you, for, for the endings, if you don't restore any of the memories for any of the successors using your special powers, you get the bad ending, which I have not gotten, so I don't know what's involved there. Uh, I've gotten the neutral ending because I screwed up on one area. If you restore the memories for at least one successor, you get the neutral ending. And the neutral ending is you replace the guy who is currently keeping things contained and uh, locked down so that the vampires don't get out and ravage the rest of the planet and also prevent the queen from resurrecting and, you know, just killing literally everything. The good ending, which I will get on my next playthrough, you have to restore the memories for every successor. And I assume that is a more permanent solution to the problem rather than you you just sitting in a place keeping everything in stasis. Uh, I bet the bad ending is you become the, the yeah. vampire queen and kill everybody. Or just... Yeah, or she resurrects or something like that. But, so uh, is, is this, is this the, the frenzy thing, is that something that was brought about by some third party, or is that something that was just always inherent to vampires? It's something just... that's always inherent to vampires, it can be brought about by a third party okay. because uh, the bad guy does that to one of your friends. Mm. Uh, so you're all who is one of vampires? The well, you can all become you're vampires. All vampires. Oh, you are all vampires? You are all vampires. Okay. Uh, none of your companions are humans. Do you, you meet one human over the course of the game. Oh, wow. Maybe two. Okay. Uh, at some point, everything someone, else is vampires. <laughs> are you looking for like a a password or or some sort of I don't know code? Uh, and does a character say, "Oh, the code is in your veins"? Does that happen? Uh, you are looking for codes. Okay, that's what the that's what the classes are called. They're All called right. codes. Step one, check. <laughs> And you have to find pieces of them to restore them as the game goes on. I've gotten, I've beaten the game once. None of the downloadable content. I don't think I have any of it actually. And there are twenty-one different blood codes. Okay. You start with three, and then you have to basically restore the rest. But blood no one says codes. the word "code vein" or "code in your veins" or <laughs> anything like that. Uh, and they don't do a title drop at any point. Okay. What, no. are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> uh, and th that's that's another way in which the game differs from Dark Souls. You can switch up what you want to do with your character at any given point. So uh, did did you find you did that a few times, or did you find did you end up finding one that you kind of stuck stuck through for the, like the bulk of the game? A combination of both, because I wanted to unlock every ability, which uh, you have to play through every single code to do that, yeah. mm -hmm. or find enough of, grind up enough of certain items to unlock the abilities without having to kill a bunch of enemies, because the drawback to leveling up in this game is that the abilities of the classes uh, levels up much slower. On this playthrough, I'm actually at such a high level, I cannot traditionally level up abilities anymore. Oh. <laughs> okay. Unless I'm joining someone in their playthrough and the game levels me down. Even with the, the ability that is supposed to make leveling up abilities easier, it's still such an insignificant amount, there's no point. Mm -hmm. Uh... 
so, uh, so th when I eventually play through this game again, not on this character, because I'm going to do a playthrough to get the good ending, uh, and it makes the most sense to just do it with this character. But at some point, I'll play back through and try to avoid leveling as much Why as possible. Why does it make the most sense to do with the character you're... Because I already have... Because uh, New Game Plus, I retain uh, everything yeah. I have. Okay. So instead of being a level 1, I'll be level 178 with every ability. Okay. So, is there... so it's just like a god mode run, basically. Is there, is there a save you could have like loaded up previously that, that, that then you could have done it? Or is that too far back? Or... Sadly, no. It, does, it doesn't do separate saves. Oh, okay. It only does character-based saves. So you'll have one save for the entire character. You can't... It's not like an Elder Scrolls game where you could reload to an earlier point. That also would have been very, very far back. Okay. So so at the point I figured it out, I I was too far in to really care. And there, like I said, there are items you can grind up to work around it. And that is something that I'm generally willing to do. Okay. Uh, this is definitely a game I'll come back to and make a new character for at some point. Even aside from my New Game Plus run, which will probably be done this weekend. I wonder, uh, it seemed like I, I heard enough about this at the time. And I wonder if there'll be a, I would bet there'd be a sequel to it at some point. Is that something you're based, interested based in? On my, based on my Googling, there's definitely going to be a sequel of some sort. Okay. It was fairly successful, and that is something I would very much be interested in. I would love... More of us, well, I suppose it depends on what the under, other endings are like, but more of a spiritual sequel, I think, is what I would like, rather than a direct oh, okay. sequel. Yeah. Code artery, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, why would you want a spiritual or, direct? Or you go mobile game and you go code capillary. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. I, <laughs> I tend to dislike sequels when... Like, every character's story is really satisfyingly done. Like, they didn't really leave oh, a spot for okay. a true sequel. It, I got it. So it's a self-contained story. What if? Yeah. Basic same story, but werewolves. I'd play it. Okay. <laughs> especially, right, if they, especially if they had, like, a fun way to do that. Like, yeah, uh-huh. Someone just sees a moon one time and goes, what is that? And then turns into a werewolf. I think <laughs> Sounds like you're yeah, a creative staff. I think we got something here. I think uh, Dark Souls-like games are going to be something that I repeatedly play in the future because I think there's lots of fun ways to do the formula and do your own thing with yeah. it. There are quite, so, uh, let's see, there's quite a few these days now, too. Yeah, I mean, Surge, there's... Surge, I think, is like a sci-fi-ish one. Or the Fallen, uh, was that? That might be one, too. If you And if you stretch it far enough, like, uh, Hollow Knight is uh, Metroidvania mixed with a Dark Souls. Shovel Knight's kind of, at least in terms of the what? dying and going what back to get yourself. something a Dark Souls? So, uh... I, I think in terms of Hollow Knight, it's mainly the fact that when you die, there's something left behind that you want to go back and get. Okay, so it's retraversing, only... like because you'd still have to retraverse that area to go back and beat the boss. Prop, like so that's like mm -hmm. the Metroidvania part of it, and also that the Metroidvania is kind of the picking up upgrades and you know un uncovering the map. But story right. told through like yeah. items and things you acquire is another kind of uh, thing that Dark Souls games tend to do like i said i'm kind of stretching it including hollow it's a, Knight it's there. a, a loose one yeah but, but it it kind of gave me a similar feeling which is why i brought it up that's the only that's the only reason i brought it up because i wasn't yeah. sure about how hollow Knight qualified but yeah i see what you're saying with the going back to the spot where you died kind of thing Really looking forward to the, whatever they have. Literally any news on Silk Song, by the way, the Hollow Knight sequel. 
I'm hoping we can still get that this year. What's the, uh, I didn't even realize there was a sequel in the works. What's uh, the estimated? Th I don't know if they ever gave a date uh, previously, a but it was also, like, I think it was something that kind of started out as DLC. Then they, I think as they worked on it, they said, we could actually do a whole game out of this. And I so believe I think, you play, sorry. Yeah, you know, you go ahead, because. I believe you play as Hornet in this one, the character who kind of helped you through parts of Hollow Knight. Uh, you had she was the boss who fought with like the pin and thread. You may not remember, which is I remember. Yes, I remember okay. Needle. I didn't realize you were seeking affirmation. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, but I, yeah, that. That's... I, I have no strong feelings about Hornet. I didn't have it, you know. I, no, well, are you re are you ready to play more from the people who made Hollow Knight? I guess is the main. I question. am. I, there I, you yeah, go. I'm very much like <laughs> Hollow Knight. I thought was awesome. And that was my rambly thoughts on Code Vein and Dark Souls like right. games. Speaking of Hollow Knight, Desperados Three, <laughs> um, which I think Valen has some things to to educate us about. Nah, I don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you were so excited that you played a 2020 game. Yeah, but you're right. It's 2021 now. I, I, what's the fucking point, how? You know? How linked to this <laughs> is uh, is this game to the Eagles song Desperado? <laughs> is my main question. Uh, I would say. Uh, how many? Holy. How many fences? Uh, I say, how many fences do you ride? <laughs> and do, would you say you do it for too long? Um, <laughs> it's a good song. Uh, it is. Good it is. Song. You know, the most compelling part of Desperados Three, I think, is the fact that um, I don't know that you'd have to be aware of I'm not sure if there is a Desperados 1 or 2 is uh, I, I have not so far missed uh, missed a beat for not having played Desperado one or two. 2, Cooper's Revenge released in 2006 uh, uh, so okay I mean like it does exist but Despera I don't know Desperados to... wanted dead or alive, so that's probably a Bon Jovi uh, tie in. Uh, 2001. Oh, finally came to Mac and Linux in 2019. So just a, a brief 18 year window between those that port. Uh, <laughs> still relevant, I'm sure. <laughs> so what, what type of Fine. game is it? It is a stealth, a real time. Oh, tactics right. game with a uh, heavily stealth, much like um, Bushido Blades. What's that game called? It's very long. It's the from the same studio that gave us Shogun Blades. Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. There we go. There's no Bushido in it. Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. Um which is a collaboration between Me, Me, Me and some other studio. Anyway, uh, it's top down. You've got a third person view of the map. You got all these guys out. All these, it, it, the difference between Shadow Tactics plays with the Shogun and this one is primarily the fact that you're cowboys now and no longer Shogun warriors. And everyone that knows that cowboys and samurai are very different. They're, well, uh, yeah, as sneaky, apparently. <laughs> I actually keep... All right, hang on. I'm watching the release trailer. Of uh, which one? Uh, Desperados 3. All right, they're looking at the Colorado Chronicle. Well, let's get, your, uh, yeah, let's get your hot take on the other uh, release oh, trailer. okay. Okay, well, so it's not an FMV game, as I was led to believe with the first 30 seconds. What's an FMV? Uh, full motion video. Uh, which is li just live video. It's, it's fine. Uh, you guys are going to watch me play one of those games soon anyway, so don't worry about it. I am not going to ever. You absolutely I, are. Yep, the shape-shifting detective. Look out for it, everybody. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> all right, we're back to the thing. He's those. peeling an apple with a knife. Okay, a, a woman's punching someone in the nuts. 
with a wedding gown. She <laughs> shot somebody with a shotgun. All right, map guy's not yeah, happy have, about that. They're cowboys. Eating an apple still. Fear st flagstone. Flagstone. They shot flagstone. a bull. Yeah, the city of Flagstone. Okay. Oh, that guy should look behind him. That's messy. Um, oh, push well, the bell on top of a guy. Yeah, you can do that. You can push bell on top of a guy. Well, because uh, part of being a stealth cowboy assassin is, well, not really. Okay, so <laughs> enter the year is 18, probably 80 something. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Let me the see place. if I can get a date off this Colorado Chronicle newspaper. Flagstone, Colorado. The setting. You are somebody Cooper. Probably John Cooper. <laughs> Very, whatever the most generic Jebediah Cooper. Jeb is, no, it's, it's, it's simpler than that. It's the most generic cowboy name you could ever imagine. You are, it's actually unclear, I think, what your role is. In the beginning, you're teaching your son about how to stealthily kill people. I'm sure that goes well. Because winning a fight, as we all know, is is about Don't put stealth. your I don't know. cigar out on the map. You gotta use that later. Flash forward. You're taking the train to Flagstone because you're hunting down a man. A man who's done you wrong, but I haven't played enough of the game to know exactly what he's done. That's part of what we call um, uh, intentionally what, a, a gap narrative. Intentionally uh, letting the audience Unreliable what? narrator? Well, he might be. I don't know. I think he's going to be a reliable narrator because he seems like he's the. Do you end up good in New guy. Orleans at any point, do you think? Going to. Well, they mentioned New Orleans a lot, so I assume we're going to bail on Colorado and go to New Orleans eventually. Another great place for cowboys and stealth tactics. This trailer's still going. John oh, Cooper searching for Frank, the man who done wronged him. Along the way, encounters a bunch of other Defense. crazy, kooky people. The DeVitt Company, yeah, they're greedy, bad. bad greedy people. and power hungry, a, a bad combo. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to continue. What I most like about it is, again, it's a real time. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah. Although, hey, quick hang, around. On, hang on here. Okay, there, all right, a guy shot two guys. Fine, he's running towards a building. Uh, and there's a horse over to the right side here, tied up as, as horses are. Yes. Near the front door of this building's just two horse skeletons. Why would they leave the skeletons out there? As a warning to other horses. Guess how long they would have to be out there to be skeletons? <laughs> well, obviously they got they the smell the had to be had to be atrocious. <laughs> they, well, the hot <laughs> desert air probably helps a little. All right. The hot, why, dry desert air. Why are you assuming that they didn't... I mean, I go down... If I need my horse skeletons, I go down to the skeleton store, and I buy me some Like you skeletons. had that in 1883 in, in Colorado. They hadn't sent that stuff down the Colorado River. That's probably where that starts. That's horses? There was an abundance of Not horse skeletons. Not horse skeletons. I also feel like... I also feel like the 1800s and earlier is about the only time you could have gotten away with a skeleton shop. Oh, all right. All right, you want to Google skeleton shop right now? All right, yeah, I want to look up. Skeleton shop. I want to see what the top result Horse is. Horse skeleton for Oh, sale. this is funny. Hey, guys, check this out. Top result for skeleton shop for me is Walmart Super Setter. If that's not a special <laughs> commentary from Google, I don't know what Ooh. is. The Walter F. Varco Equine Services. They can sell me an equine skeleton, no problem. Starting at 5K. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Skulls Unlimited for all of my. Their top article skeletons. is always building new skeletons, so that's fun. That's weird. Skulls Unlimited, I can get a real human skull for fourteen hundred dollars. So. Boneclones.com. Bone clones. Yeah, here we go. Articulated horse skeleton, twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand. We just got to get into the skeleton game. It's a lot of bones. <laughs> <laughs> what what website is this? I gotta see this twelve. Hang on, let me let me look at the horse partial foot, comma flexible. Can we? Oh, I can get that for two fifty five. Who wants a horse foot? <laughs> Not me. For two hundred and fifty five dollars. <laughs> it's articulated. That's right, girl. Fourteen hundred bucks is a great deal. 
articulated, so it's really well spoken. <laughs> Enough. Uh, well, articulated but can also mean that it moves, like an articulated figure. If I said articulate, then that would be it's fine. Uh, I know that was it, my joke. It, it also Dave. said flexible. I fucked the joke. God damn it. <laughs> uh, giant ant eater skull, hundred seventy-two dollar. We're going in the right direction. That's a weird skull. I think we all need a skull. All right. Uh, who wants? Oh, Wolverine skull. That's that's me, obviously. Hundred eighty-five. There's there's some clean teeth. Oh, you, can, you can get an oval display base or a storage bag. Could you find a Hoosier skull for me? Because I'm about Let ready. Let see. I got you a, a black-footed ferret. A sea otter. A sea otters are cute. Um, common American bee. What is the teeth color on this thing? Oh, God. Can you share these things you're looking right, at? I'm, I'm putting them in the Twitch chat. Guys, I've... I can go get you a taxidermy coyote right now for 200 bucks. Coyote no, skull. Here we go. Hang on. Bones bucks. Clones Incorporated. What are bone clones? The largest rodent in North America. I forgot a beaver is a rodent. That's funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. Economy white tailed deer doe skull. Why is it a. What does that mean? Is there a economy? Yeah, what's the what? What makes it economical? I'm sure it's it probably got shot in the head, so there's like a bullet. Oh, these are cast from wolves. These are reproductions. Uh, reproductions, Dave. These are fucking bullshit. That explains why they have so many. <laughs> the, uh, the, econ the economy class classification. But the molds implies they do at least have one of every one of these. So. I think in a Not pinch, necessarily. I, I think in a pinch it's fine. I don't know if these reproduction skulls are gonna sate my <laughs> my bone needs. Fossil hominids. Here we go. Give it to some people. Fossil yeah, hominids. sorry. Currently, real bone. Post Currently, McSweet. I didn't realize we have a. A legend in chat, Curly McSweeter himself. And wow, and Q Childers. I had no idea that the chat was blowing up so much. Ooh, Thousands the, of followers. Give me the endangered reptiles, yeah. Giant Chinese now, if, giant salamander skull. There you go. That's a weird looking. Make thing. sure you throw down your favorite skulls uh, think, in chat. I think the Chinese giant salamander is going to be mine. But are these still just the reproduction molds? I want actual. Well, I'm okay. I'm not but paying Chinese import prices on what I'm sure is a very rare animal. Because I clicked on the endangered species subheading. The fact that they're even selling rep repos of this, I think, is, is risky at best. So <laughs> Probably. You guys ever seen a Chinese giant style man? They can live over 80 years? It's an amphibian! Oh, five feet! Yeah, oh, they're giant, man. That's too big. Well, you know, sometimes giant doesn't mean anything, though. <laughs> it being, it tends to mean relatively giant. But, but like, if yeah. you think of, like, a regular salamander, which is, like, yeah. six inches, I would, giant, I'd be like, oh, like a foot and a half. Yeah, Not, oh! It, <laughs> Did you guys know that uh, giant salamander farming is very big in China? There's over there's an estimated 2.6 million Chinese giant salamanders in farms, um, far surpassing the estimated wild population of 50,000. So wow, okay, wow, cool. Looks like uh, we're on big on that farming train. Uh, okay. We, anyway, have, say have we strayed a, a titch off the path here? What do we think? <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, we have to get to an hour somehow. That's true, and it was mostly my fault, so. <laughs> oh, shout no, out to... It was Oscar mine. Was shout out to Oscar... <laughs> I gotta stop laughing, so I said, shout out to Australopithecus Austro... Robustus in chat. We don't get enough early hominin. It's hominids, shout out it's hominids right? Hominin? Hominin. He, well, he also said... 
Hamininin. Ham Hamin Hamininin. Hamin 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 It is Hamin. I think. Hamin Well, I don't know. I'm gonna look it up because I don't know. Hamin. Hamin is okay. Hamin is great apes, which is probably more. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Broad. And then the uh, Hamininin. All right. Or Hamininin. Hamin sounds I better anyway, so Hamin Hamin can fuck off. Um, uh, speaking of hominids, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Okay, so, first of all, this this is a game based off of a movie, based off of a comic book series. Uh, I've read the comic book series, really enjoyed it. Watched the movie several times, really enjoy it. Love the movie. I've just recently been able to actually play the game because it was stuck in like right who has the right hell for it was a nine or two mess. years that was a big it, mess it came out along with uh, shortly after the movie in 2010 on like xbox live marketplace and i didn't get it at the time because i didn't have an xbox live membership and then by the time i like started looking online to see if there was any way i could play it it was like nope Rice development hell. One of those but, really rare games where, like, there's just like if you didn't get it, you're just out of luck. Like, usually you can you can find stuff in the dark and dusty corners. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's interesting. What but, dark dusty uh, corners do you usually look in? I'll I'll tell you offline. <laughs> uh, but today I was reading. Uh, I was looking over random Google articles. One mentioned. Hey, this is on the Nintendo Switch website or, or Nintendo Switch Marketplace. I go there; it's fifteen bucks. I'm like sold. I'm immediately playing this game. Finally, uh, so this game is a brawler game, sort of like uh, River City Ransom or one of those old classics from the Super Nintendo series. Uh, you beat people up. They drop coins, which you then use to buy upgrades. Uh, you start with three lives, and you retain those lives until you... What's the, like, what am I, is it a the, platformer, you said? A brawler. Uh, you, like a two, you, like Streets of Rage kind of thing, right? Yeah, uh, you fight a bunch of random mooks who drop the, cash for you to spend on ransom. upgrades. Uh... And despite the title being Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, you can actually play five other characters from the series slash movie. Uh, you can play as... Hang on, let me Ramona. get it. Okay. All right, uh, Ramona would be one of them, right? Obviously. Uh, his sister? Uh, no. All right. Yeah, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other characters are Stephen Stills, the guy who leads their band. But not the actual Stephen Stills from Cosby Stills, Nash & Young. Correct. Okay. Uh, Kim, the drummer that he dated and then dumped. Oh, that makes because, sense. Because Scott is a jerk. Knives, the girl he dated and yeah, then also dumped. Makes sense. I'm a fucking idiot. Scott is a jerk. Uh... And then his roommate, Willis, who also is a merchant in the game. So I don't know what happens if you uh, play as him and then go to the shop he runs. But I'm assuming it's just nothing. Like it, Maybe he and Scott switch places? Maybe. Like, that's a possibility. Uh, I've been playing as Kim, the drummer, because I liked her design best out of the characters. And... Like I said, you you go so you are sort of playing through the plot of the movie. You are on a mission to defeat Ramona's seven evil exes. Uh, I'm playing this game like I play most games, and just repeatedly grinding on the first level, and have pretty much maxed out my character for the rest of the game because it does not take long. <laughs> solid, solid strat. Uh. And I like the, I like a bunch of little things they've got in there. Like just just like in the movie, 
the first the fight with Ramona's first evil ex, Matthew Patel. He has succubus backup dancers. Hmm. And I, sadly it doesn't play the song because that I think that's actually my favorite fight in the movie. Uh and then there's just little references to various things in the background, like you'll see a Triforce somewhere. Uh, when you beat a level, your character goes to the next level on, like, a Kirby star. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure... I've only played through the first level so far, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot more little references like that as the game goes on. And... I, I just love the look of the game. It looks like a snowy, at least the first level, this, a snowy suburban town in 16-bit 2D. Mm -hmm. And the, the, it resembles the comic book, the original comic book, quite a lot, even in the 16-bit uh, style, which I think is a really nice touch. Oh, cool. Uh, and I believe it, unlike a certain game that we were looking forward to, it does have local co-op. <laughs> so, uh, if at any point, uh, you know, w once we can eventually gather again, In the, after, the, in the after times. In the after times. It's a game I will probably play with friends as sort of like an end of the night, just kind of screw around on a game thing. Sort of like Super Smash Brothers, which I actually need to get at some point. Beat em ups are a, are, a, are a very good game for that, that kind of thing. Randy's yeah. been uh, doing Super Smash Brothers. I will uh, put it first on my list of things to get when I have the opportunity I'm, so that I can kind of play with the cousins. I have something that should replace that as first time. Quick question for you guys. This was uh, yes. posed originally by um, the Facebook group Indianapolis Moms, which appeared on my thread for some reason. Oh, I don't know why. I, okay. Quick Not a great start. If if um there were an Olympic event that you could get a gold medal in. Oh boy. What would that event be? I'm I'm not an Olympic athlete. I no, just... no, but I mean, you, okay. that's why you have to make an event that you could get the gold it, medal in. It would be in being at? someone named my exact name <laughs> and being me. That but would be there my... just you. Yeah. There. If they're just like, hey, a gold medal to whoever's sitting in section four, seat three, and I just happen to be there. That's my gold uh, medal. Uh... Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I would easily get a gold medal in procrastination. <laughs> that was a common everything. answer. I, so... I think you actually have a lot of competition for that based on the number of Indianapolis bombs who posted procrastination as uh, their so answer. So. This was a co an argument my wife and I got into. Not that you could get a gold medal in, but that you could, like, that maybe the, the one you could realistically qualify for. And I said moving to some random country and walking, like speed walking. And she yep. maintained that archery would be that. And I said that you don't realize how far away that target is in archery. Your, your wife thinks she could qualify for archery. That was her supposition. Has she ever fired a bow before? <laughs> I don't know. But also... Bows are really but... thin. Compound is... bows are actually tough to even draw. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had a real hard time doing it. Uh, back the only time I ever shot bows at a range. But uh, also, and this is my, my one, my, you know, my ham fisted uh, opportunity to complain about Olympics coverage. Show how far they're shooting those things. Oh, yeah. The, All the they angles. do in, yeah, they, in the covers, they just show it. The, the guy sitting real still holding the arrow. And then and there's a, 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 a the six-inch close-up on the target. He lets yeah. go, and it goes... Pfft. And it's like... And then you look, and they find... Once in a blue moon, they'll show a wide shot. And the curve they're putting on this is like six feet in the air. I know, it's crazy. It's insane. 
the fact that they don't show the flight of the arrow, it's like... I could be a producer that be on like, that and do a better job, I think. That's the one thing I could do. That would be like if, during a golf match, if they just zoomed in on the green, just on the cup. And the guy's face. <laughs> uh, I can paint a ridiculous amount of troop minis in a pretty short period of time, so I guess... Okay, now we're cooking. That would be, like, uh, a competition I could try would be... Get these that. minis to a tabletop standard. Or get as many of these minis to a tabletop there standard within X period of time. There you go. Now we're thinking outside okay. of the box. Okay, then mine is finding useless IndyCar diecasts on eBay. Pretty good. There you go. Two gold my, medalists right there. <laughs> my record right now is 50 Space Marines in a week. Which is, for, for someone just, you know doing this casually, not, like, actual gold medal attempting speed. Pretty good. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to no, I, I, uh... miniature painting. How do I speed paint a miniature? Speed painting? Speed painting? Sorry, you guys can keep going. <laughs> wasting, wasting our time. Or are you trying to figure out whether or not that? I'm trying to see if there if there is a community that does this because it would make sense to me because there's people do everything. There's. I'm not sure about speed painting, but I know there's lots of uh, different contests for like best painted. Uh, War Warhammer, the company that makes Space Marines, specifically has two different ones. There's uh, okay. the Golden Demon, which is their main one, and then. There's the Slayer Sword, which is the step above that. Okay. Uh, in the uh, Warhammer Reddit, there is a topic called Speed Painting 101. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just scrolling through it, and then there's one subheading that says WASH, and another set that says BRING THE MAGIC, in all caps, which is very good. <laughs> well, I know what a WASH is. Oh, I don't God. know what BRING THE MAGIC means. <laughs> You okay. do look to be frozen, Valen. No, he's just very still. No, okay, yeah. Seem to be working now. Anyway, I, my Olympic event, if it existed, I would gold medal in the 100 meter dash. <laughs> <laughs> if only, you know, if only. I did watch a video of uh, some, like, world competition of Javelin, and I was like, I could, yeah, I could do that. Sure. <laughs> javelin. You're now you're yeah. on javelin. Yeah, I'm on okay. javelin now. Um, All right, fine. I want to see Amanda shoot a bow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I, this was back when we lived in an apartment. I literally went out in the hallway and measured the distance, and then I cut like a plate <laughs> and put it on the wall and like said, "Okay, let's. Do you really think we could hit that?" She said yes, so it's still a it's still a a, a sore topic. Um, All right, I mean the confidence. Archery is ninety nine percent confidence. It is okay. Uh, okay. Half a percent perspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we want to move to our final topic of the day? Yeah, the Aaron Games nineteen ninety three. Let's let's wrap this okay. up. Okay. Let's. Do you guys have the thing open on the the screen? Your your screens here. I'm going to try to open a new text thing. What I... am I opening? I sent it in the Discord, I think. And... I'm... Yeah, Look... okay, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Which one did he send it in? Uh, it, in should be the... in... it should be in the Discord. The lobby we were in prior to joining the call. Okay, that would be. All right, I'm just gonna overwrite the okay. topics thing. It's a lot of games. Yeah. Okay. Like, so all right. So 1993 games. All we're gonna do today is kind of get the sh get the quote unquote short list. Okay. We don't have to limit it to anything. So if you see a game there, we're gonna hit it. And then next week we can we can start the cutthroat business of cutting and ordering. Sure. 
character. Uh, my number one's going to be Land of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to type that. Um... That was <laughs> number two on the charts. That was for six months charted. That's one of the highest selling Game Gear games. Get, game Gear? You get out of here. That, the, <laughs> one of the, it wasn't even the top Game Gear game? Number two for six no, it's, months. It's well, peak God, position was number two. two. It only charted That's for six. Pretty se- good. You get out. No, good. get out of here. <laughs> game, game Gear. I had a Game Gear. It sucked. <laughs> six double A batteries that thing needed. It was ridiculous. Six double A batteries. That's to say, I did not have a Game Gear. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, so, uh, so uh, right I would go back up to the notable releases because like that stuff's got. Like Tetris, which is not like none of those games came out. Like Super Mario Brothers Two was nineteen eighty eight, I think. Okay, so all right, Star. I think Star Fox is on there. You got the FX chip. I obviously have to suggest Mega Man X. Mega like Man, that's, a, that's that's that, yeah, that's, that's given for me. That's, that's, that's probably going to be my just top one overall. Uh, X Wing for sure. Doom, I feel like, belongs on there. Oh, fuck is Doom? Oh, Doom? Oh, wow. Doom is not yeah. Forgot about that. I didn't realize that myself. Uh, let's see. Secret of Mana? Anyone? Your mana was good. I'm gonna go with Bulls vs. Blazers and the NBA Playoffs. Doc, I feel like we've got to put on Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Link's Awakening would be my number two. A game that was just finally became playable last year. Boom, boom. Suck it, Link's Awakening. Uh, I almost want to say Super Mario All-Stars, but that's kind of cheating uh, since it's just... You know what? Let's let's throw it on there, because uh, I think there's a discussion to be had about uh, like the look of it and stuff. Because it did, like, I, I, it updated the graphics and kind of that, and that stuff, so... And also, that was I think that was the first time we could you know, people in the U.S. could play the Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2, which was... Uh, okay, cool that's stuff. a fair point. So. Also, uh, I haven't played this one, but I should, and have it in my Steam library, so I'll try to play it before our next podcast, Day of the Tentacle. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's one of the seminal point-and-click adventures. Missed. Gotta put Missed on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see. Anyone got love for uh, Disney's Aladdin on the Genesis? I know, I know some people talk about that being no. really good. I, I mean, we did not have a Sega Genesis, so... NBA Jam on there for sure. Yeah, I never played it, unfortunately. Okay, here's, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Uh, one that I don't give two shits about. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2. Undeniably a huge game. Huge, but I, game, I didn't play it. Okay, I, I didn't either. I've literally because played of the uh, But okay, so game. so I I don't want necessarily want to limit this to stuff we played in terms of quote unquote best, right? Well, then what we have to like consider the culture. Well, like I like I I know enough about Mortal Kombat two to be able to say like object like whatever like I'll probably try to keep it off because I think it's gross and I just don't like it, but. I mean, I didn't. Killer instincts. I, I'm gonna find it hard to put a game on my okay. list. I, I guess I, I'm saying we don't. That doesn't have to be a a, a super strict uh, requirement. Like if you see one that you're like, oh enough, or like you know, blah blah blah. Like I, I uh, like I don't have a problem putting. Uh, let's see. I've never. I I I have not. Uh, you know, really played Doom. You know, the original Doom on PC that much. But I would, I would yeah, absolutely put it. I, amount. I would actually absolutely put it in the top five for sure, just because of. Uh, and I, I, I've played through some of it on on Switch now, and I think I, you know, I've always played it at random points because that's that game's well, on everything. But I guess that I guess that makes this a it's a slippery slope because then I feel like, based again, if we're now we're like thinking about its footprint you know then I, i'm just I, saying that I, i'm just saying that that that, that that can be a factor it doesn't have to be but 
Yeah, I, like, I it, think it's like, a pretty loosey goosey. Yeah, uh, look of course, system, of I course like it, it is. <laughs> 1993. I, like I was in like fourth grade. What the fuck did I know? Yeah, that's why mine. <laughs> that's why my list has two things on it. I mean, we had yeah. seventh guest in the house. I remember seeing the jewel case and didn't play the fucking thing. Mega Man X and uh, Doom and uh, what about uh, here's the answer. What about Mega Man Six? Last one on that. last I've, one on the NES. I've played it. I I'm not that right. fond of the Mega Man NES games, but yeah. but I mean I like well that's actually Super Nintendo. Then eight was on PlayStation, which just seems seven was the Super weird. Nintendo one. Yeah, seven was on Super Nintendo. Then eight was PlayStation, PlayStation yeah. which seems like a weird jump. It, yeah, it feels weird. Uh, and I, I think I think I buy leaving that off because Mega Man X is the same year, and I think X is yeah, I pretty obviously the better game in that sense. Uh, Mega Man X was way more impactful on me than Mega Man Six could ever hope to be. Okay, I think uh, I say no one uh, Daytona USA. Anyone uh, Daytona? Nope. Okay, uh, Ridge Racer. Classic Namco title. You're, you've ignored. I'm looking at uh, the first person to ever win the 100 meter dash in the Olympics, Thomas Burke. Oh, we've, we've moved beyond that. <laughs> Virtua, <laughs> Virtua oh. Fighter. Anyone for Virtua Fighter? I'm really not much of a fighter person. I think the only fighter game I ever really played extensively was Soul Calibur 2. Okay. I say the Virtual Fighter I know is like the, it was the first like three D fighter game. So you're welcome, Soul Calibur, I guess. Uh, standing <laughs> on Virtual Fighter shoulders. Um, I, I think we've got. I think this this list is pretty. I think this will be a little uh, you know difficult to to narrow down to five. I, and I want to order it. I want to order it. Okay, so we're gonna pick the best well, game in my team. list. My list only has four titles on it, because I only played four of these games. Okay, so. okay. Well, I guess we'll listen to me and Junk Blade more on this year. Uh... I will <laughs> make sure I've played a few more of these by our next podcast. Okay, so I've played all right, I've played Star Fox, Mega Man X, X-Wing, Doom, i played Secret of Man, i played Link's Awakening, I've just played Super Mario All-Stars. I've played, okay, I've played all of these games. Yeah, I have, I have only played... In some capacity. Uh, only played X, Doom, Link's Awakening, and NBA Jam. Okay, so uh, okay, so let's let's pick one or two games that will at least theoretically try to try, try to play or sample in the coming week. Now, some of these are uh, so like I know Junk Lake. I think you can play Secret of Mana no problem with the SNES thing on Switch. I think I also have the collection of Mana. I don't know if it's oh. on there. It should, it better, uh, if it's a collection of Mana, it better have Secret of Mana. Shit. I I need to play Star Fox and I need to try Star the original Doom. Okay, like, Star Fox I've... is on there. Doom I think is actually on sale right now on Switch. It's a great way to play it. That's what I've been playing it on, and it's like two or three bucks. So I played Doom twenty sixteen, which is why I That's felt very like good. it should be on here. Yeah, oh, I no, no, just... no, yeah, the original Doom. If we don't put that on here, we're you know <laughs> how could we call ourselves Doom. serious gamesmen if we didn't put Doom on here? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's one, uh, of my, it's one of my four, so... Okay. I have played Super Mario All-Stars, absolutely. And I think every single one of the games from there is on the Switch library at this point. I think so. So that should be easy enough. Uh, Val, which ones are you going to try, bud? I'm going to play Desperados 3. <laughs> what if I figured out a way to send you a file of X-Wing? Uh, of which one? Of X-Wing? X-Wing. I, I have it I on my not, desktop. I will not play it. But I appreciate it. I just don't think... I think the problem is, is with playing some of these games today is I don't... Do you think X-Wing has aged well enough for me to enjoy it? I, I think you would really enjoy X-Wing. Like, X-Wing... And, uh, did you play X-Wing or TIE Fighter at all? Like, they're very kind of involved space flight simulator kind of things, like... Well, yeah, that's... But very involved for the time right like what... i mean i mean like they're way more involved than like rogue squadron and stuff 
and I, I, you know, I really enjoyed Rogue Squadron too. I don't want to sound like I'm crapping on that, but like it's, I think you had to manage fuel, you got to manage weapons, you got to do all this stuff. The stories, well, right. like, people talk about how good the stories were. Uh, well, so for instance, though, I didn't play the original Star Fox either in 1993. I didn't play the try playing that until like 10 years after it came out, and I did not enjoy. Well, uh, the, yeah, no, know. that one's like three triangles put together, but. You know, yeah, um, that's why I haven't played that and, far. And, and yet, I will say, that is maybe one of the first games I remember, because my brother, my older brother, got so excited when we got it, he threw up. <laughs> and I, I think it was because we got the Super Nintendo at the same time as it, so 1993 might have been when we got our Super Nintendo. But like the FX chip, was, it's like something burned into my brain, it's like, holy shit, it's got the FX chip. <laughs> like, that's... Awesome. Yeah, so it, it, it's Star Fox is worth it for the uh, the music of the first level. That's all you really need is that Cornaria music. The the music is great, really yeah. good. But and then oh like God, uh, the, I'm, the, I'm the, looking the, at clips of I'm looking at clips of X Twink. I don't think I could. Okay, but I I didn't say you had to beat it. I just said we had to try it. <laughs> so you say, oh, I loaded it up and fucking sucked. I hate it. That's 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 fine. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it. I don't. But like think the the, the conceit here is that we're actually going to try a few of these games to to brush up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give secret. I, I want to play some more of Secret of Mana. Uh, I'll do Day of the Tentacle as well, and maybe I kind of want to just I want to play Doom, so I'll just do Doom as well. Those are my three. I'm gonna do. I think Doom would be worth if I'm gonna play one. It'd be Doom. Okay, so we'll all play. We'll all play Doom. Man. So we can, yep. we can. Secret we can, of Mana is also something I could. Secret of Mana, I think, is a, is a, is a good one to kind of, uh, you know, one of one of the earlier action RPGs, at least to my mind. Uh, so I think that's a that's a really good one. Okay, cool. I, I I'll try to find Mist just because I'm like I that Mist is a game that I remember like my parents doing. Like it was bit, like that. That's one that reached a cultural level that I recall. That like that that thing was enormous, and it was like a. It's hilarious to me now because it's like a hyper card game basically, where it's just like different slides you're going through. But like the solving mysteries, I don't. I, yeah, I, I'm curious about Mist. Cool. Okay. We've got a plan, an action plan for this upcoming week, and we're gonna mm -hmm. all execute. All well, right. actually, how do I how would I even play Doom? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. I we'll mean, figure that out. So just, yeah, I, I think you can play Doom on like a calculator at this point. So, <laughs> like the like the joke is like you can play Doom on like literally. Anything. Right, let's just do Doom nineteen ninety three. I want Google. to play Doom right now. I'm Google looking at Google. Doom apps on Google Play. Re release. Not paying four ninety nine. <laughs> Doom on Steam. You can't you can't do five bucks for. <laughs> I'm not paying. I'm not paying a dime for. All right, I'm gonna gift Val and fucking Doom on Steam. No, no, no. Send me five dollars. No, I, no. I'm giving you. I'm giving you Doom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, Jumpley, you should check on Switch because I, I I I'm almost positive I saw it on I saw it on a, tw a tweet about it being on sale. Uh, I will. And with that, we are past our hour, and, uh... Are there any questions from the chat? Because we, yeah. we theoretically had people on the chat, but I think they're gone now. Um, yeah, they were, they, but but they were there, everybody. They were there. We should have oh, we should, we should have stopped and gotten a question from them then. Yeah, that's what I was That's a, just that's a mistake on our part. Um, well, we'll you know, live and learn. Live and learn. Uh, the stream's blowing up, so we're gonna have people stopping by in the future, and we can take this little nugget and plant it, and it'll grow into a nugget tree. So. Yep. Wow. Okay. Um, that concludes episode sixty-one. <laughs> All right, hang on. We gonna do the uh, oh, uh, Q Childers? What? Do you have a question? What What is your? We need a. Please give a, us a question. question. Let's really get twenty twenty one rolling. Right, I'll start the 
Wait, wait, wait. Guys, 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 guys. Wait, are we not? Are we not waiting for the quest? Are we? I, no, this is. I'm not. It's 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 it's, it's underlying music. <laughs> I think that was a question. It was real, boys. Put a question at the end of that. It, like, from the Stephen King. It's the, always. It's always. Was real. Oh, fuck. Boys. God. Fuck it. I'm not. I know. I'm not talking about a goddamn clown. Um. <laughs> Any of you still play Hearthstone? Ah, uh, no. no. No, it's it has gotten to the point where it's just not fun to try and keep up on free to play. We should. That, I've, we, I've honestly given up on Magic Arena too, unless I'm doing, uh, like a draft run with we, somebody. We should do it. That's a good topic, actually. I need to write that down. Genres of games we would like to play, but are so incredibly intimidated by, we never do. Because the collectible card game genre is one I was like, oh, yeah, I love cards. Love them. Love cards. Virtual, physical, love them. You ask me to like, play a game with cards, and my brain explodes. I can't. <laughs> I cannot I, handle I the number of options, the, the strats that you could employ. No, I can't do it. But I've got a binder full of... I've got two binders full of fucking Star Wars cards there on the shelf. Did I ever play the game? No. <laughs> I still have those cards. <laughs> They're great cards. Yep. And on that note, that yeah, concludes that note. episode 61. Special thank you to Q Childers for that great question. Good um, stuff. Which the answer is no. It was a universal <laughs> demonstrative no. You know, props to that game for still going, I guess, right? You know, uh, yeah. yeah. Getting going. out there, ma making strong. that paper. Uh, Wait, Q Childers, well, you'll have to tune in next week and answer this question, but uh, do you still play Hearthstone? And we're gonna, that's what's called a cliffhanger. And, and, yeah, and one. tune in next week to see the top game of 1993. It was X Man. <laughs> Mega Man X. No, X Man. It's funny if you put those words in a different order, it's a different thing. All right, signing off. Thank you, everyone. Bye.